Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number 10, the final pack in my science project of cracking the packs from my Magic the Gathering Theros Beyond Death bundle. Check out my preview video for the explanation on how the science project will test the theory to see if I can open cards with value greater than the $30 I spent on the bundle. I've added a link to my Magic the Gathering Theros Beyond Death bundle preview video in the description below. Quick reminder, I'm a casual player. So as I open the pack, my commentary is going to be focused uh, from a very, very casual Magic the Gathering player point of view. I think it's a different way to take a look at rating Magic cards since the vast majority of Magic the Gathering players are casual players. After I open the pack, I'm going to choose the best card of the pack, in my opinion. Maybe you might agree or maybe you won't, but it will be fun. Okay, so I got the final pack here. Let's take a look and see what is in pack number 10. I've only gotten one Mythic in this bundle, so I'm really hoping to get another Mythic. Uh, the odds are stacked against me, but you know, it's worth a shot. You never know what could happen. You never know what could be in a magic pack. Could be anything. Could be 15 Mythics. I'm just hoping for one Mythic. Uh, first card is Inspiring Awe, three and a green. Instant. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn except combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures scry 2. I don't like this card at all. I wouldn't play it. If it got played against me and I lost, I would just shrug, shrug my shoulders and say, oh well. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, oops, I went two cards too many. The second card out of the pack was Underworld Charger. Three, two and a black, you get a Nightmare Horse. Three, three. Um, underworld Charger can't block. Escape, four and a black. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. Underworld Charger escapes with two plus one, plus one counters on it. This is a common that I like. Uh, obviously, black is the strongest color in Theros Beyond Death. No surprise there. Um, Nightmare, Underworld Charger did a lot of work. Tax is a three, three. Uh, three cards to exile your, out of your graveyard is not that big of a deal. Um, routinely, I was playing two of these in a draft deck, and I was escaping both, and you know, five, five beaters, pretty good. You wanna play it in a more aggressive deck, because obviously it can't block. Indomitable Will, one and a white. Enchantment or a flash, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two. I'm not high on this card. Uh, for two mana, it doesn't give me enough power boost to be a combat trick. It just is a waste of a card to save my creature. Nah. Okay, next card. Wings of Hubris. Two generic. Equip creature as flying. Sacrifice Wings of Hubris. Equip creature can't be blocked this turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Equip one. I like this card a lot. Um, it's surprising to have a cheap artifact equipment for two to play and then one to equip um you don't have to be in a blue white flyers deck in fact you don't even have to be in a flyers deck it's great in a green red deck it's great in a blue green deck a green black deck uh, if you need to block flyers it'll put your big beast up in the air and it stops the flying attack and if you need those last points of damage you sacrifice it and the creature can't be blocked and you go in for the kill Surprisingly, I like it. I was down to begin the format, but I really like it. I've, I've, I've grown to, um, to want to play it more. Oread of Mountain's Blaze, one and a red. For a 1-3 enchantment creature nymph, for two and a red, you can discard a card, draw a card. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, I much rather would like to loot than I would to rummage. Um, I didn't play it that often either in draft, and I'm not really eager to play it in any other format. Plummet. One and a green. Destroy target creature with flying. Um, so this card can be really annoying, especially if you like blue-white like blue -white flyers like I do. This card can wreck your plans. Um, I don't think that it's quite a card that you main deck all the time. Really, Plummet is the best in the side board if you run up against a flyer deck or a big flyer you can't deal with plummet's gonna be your winning card flummox cyclops three and a red for a four four cyclops with reach whenever two or more creatures your opponents control attack flummox cyclops can't block this combat 
Funny story, I was playing my friend. He had this on the battlefield. I had two flyers. All I needed to do was attack and he'd be dead. The funny thing about it was neither of us had read this card all the way through. I just saw that it had reach. My flyers couldn't get through the 4-4, so I didn't attack. He hadn't read the card. He understood why my flyers didn't attack, so I just passed the turn. Two turns later, he beat me. Um, lesson learned, read the card. All I had to do was attack, and the Cyclops couldn't block either of my flyers. Uh, it's an okay card. I mean, for four mana, you get a 4-4 with reach. Uh, usually in a red deck, you're not looking to block. Four for four, four is great stats, attack in. Next card is Satessin Skirmisher, one on a green, two one creature, human warrior. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Satessin Skirmisher gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Don't like it. Um, two one for two, sure, green and white run enchantments, but at best you're gonna get a three two, unless this thing has trample, unless you played it way early game, even then, it's going to get taken out by 1-1s. One it's going to get taken out by 2-2s. Two it's not the green creature I want to play. Nyxborn Seaguard, 2 and 2 blue for a 2-5 enchantment creature Merfolk Soldier. Uh, no abilities. Um, Yeah, I mean, if you need a 2-5 blocker for 4, you got one. Maybe that's the best thing I can say about it. Okay, next card. Thrill of Possibility. 1 and a red, instant, as an additional cast cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two cards. So Thrill of Possibility was in Throne of Eldraine. Now it's reprinted in Theros Beyond Death. Uh, in red, the cool thing about it is it's instant now. For the longest time, uh, this sort of, of you know, a, a card was a sorcery. Tormenting Voice um, was a sorcery. Same cost, you discard a card and you draw two cards. Now with it being instant, I think it's a little bit better and in maybe mono red or aggressive builds, it's something I would definitely play. Pitch a land, draw a couple of cards. Uh, first in common is Sea God Scorn. Four and two blue, sorcery. Return up to two or three target, return up to three target creatures and or enchantments to their owner's hands. I drafted this once. Uh, it was in my hand a couple of times. Never got to play it. Uh, I think the one, the first game that I had it, I won. The second game, I can never get to six mana and bounce the board and then up. I ended up losing with it in my hand. Um, it's it's more of a draft card. Uh, in, in a standard format, from a casual viewpoint, yeah, I might play it, but um, it's not the type of card I want to play in my blue white or blue black control decks usually i want to have this ability plus something that helps me out um, maybe i'd play it if i wanted to bounce two of their things and then bounce one of my things to get an etb effect but um yeah it's not a card i i, I look aggressively to play hero of nixborn one generic one red one white enchantment creature human soldier at it's a 2-2. When Hero of Nyxborn enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of the Nyxborn, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. So it's the pseudo-heroic ability for red and white. There's, I think, around 6 or 7 creatures in Theros uh, that are all in red or white that have this ability. Uh, I drafted, I think, the very first um, draft that I did with Theros Beyond Death, I did a red-white build. This was the key component. I had um, three or four of the other white and red creatures with the pseudo-heroic effect. If I got out of the gate real fast, won the game. Uh, it, it got out of control too quickly. If I didn't have that drop one, drop two, drop three um, sequence of events, there's no way you're winning because by turn six or seven, if you haven't won, the creatures on the other side of the battlefield are just too big to get through. Okay, the final uncommon is Destiny Spinner. So in my preview video, this was another one of the mythic uncommons. Uh, Destiny Spinner, one in a green. It's a 2-3 enchantment creature human. Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Uh, for three in a green, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. I like the ability that creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. I think that's pretty cool. I am a blue base control player, so I love countering things. So this definitely hoses me. Uh, I like it on green because if I'm playing a green-white deck, 
and they don't rid of, get rid of Destiny Spinner, basically all of my creature's enchantments can't be countered, and they're going to stick on the battlefield. Uh, I like the late game ability if I've got enough mana, which in green I probably do, where I can turn a target land into, you know, hopefully at that point, uh, four, four, um, trample and haste. Um, though I worry a little bit if I'm ramping in green, I probably don't have as many lands because I'm playing other ramp creatures, but still destiny spinner is a great uncommon. Okay. The rare, let's hope we get a mythic. Come on mythic. We get tectonic giant. So for two and two red, we get an elemental giant that's a 3-4. Whenever a tectonic giant attacks or becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. Tectonic giant deals three damage to each opponent. Exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them until end of turn. End of your next turn, you may play that card. I like tectonic giant. I think it's a really cool card. I have not been able to play with it at all. I like the concept of it. I was a big fan of... Um, the Magic Origins card, the creature, that kind of started the ball rolling with red and giving you the ability to exile a card and play it during your turn or during your next turn. Um, I like that if it's targeted or attacked, I could choose to do one of these two things. Dealing three damage to an opponent is pretty cool. I attack in. If they don't block it, that's three damage. If they do block it, it's still gonna be three damage. It could either be six damage or it could be three damage. A four butt pretty much saves it in any combat scenario. And aside from Lava Coil and a few of the common spells that I don't think many people are playing in their casual builds, Tectonic Giant is gonna survive and it's gonna to continue to wreak havoc as the game goes on. Okay, uh, an island and let me guess, a white human sold, yep. So, seven out of the 10 packs have uh, had a human soldier in it. My favorite card or best card of the pack is going to be Tectonic Giant. Uh, this is a card that, like I said, I haven't been able to play. I'm really interested in playing it and seeing how it goes. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Until next time when I review my science project to see if I opened cards with value greater than the $30 I spent on my Magic the Gathering Theorist Beyond Death bundle. Remember, all 10 of these packs that I've cracked have been for science.